Hi, this is Sarah with the School of Self-Reliance, and today I'm going to do a short video as a little prepper tip on wild and edible medicinal plants in your backyard. And as you can see right here, we have a dandelion. Everybody's got these in their yard. They tend to come out first spring, usually around April, you can find your yard covered in them. Um, before the plant turns yellow and flowers out like that, the young leaves can be added to salads. Um, you can eat them, or you can use it, uh, cook the leaves and use them as a cooked vegetable. Um, some people say though that once the flower turns yellow and the leaves become kind of bitter, that it doesn't taste very good to eat. Um, that's kind of up to you. Some people like a bitter taste uh, leaf in their uh, salad. Uh, supposedly you can dig the root up on the dandelion plant and uh, dry it and uh, roast it and kind of grind it up and it's supposed to make a good coffee substitute. I've never tried it because I'm not a big coffee drinker but for those of you who like coffee out there uh, instead of just going for old chicory root and dirt you can uh, grind up some dandelion root make a coffee substitute. You can also uh, pick these yellow heads and uh, batter them up and fry them kind of like you would uh, zucchini squash blossoms. Uh, some people like the fried flowers they taste pretty good. Uh, you can also pick a bunch of the yellow heads and make dandelion wine out of them. I'm sure you can find several recipes online for them. Uh, some people like to make, you know, homemade dandelion wine out of it. I like to pick them and make homemade dandelion jelly. And as you can kind of see here, it, if you can see it kind of flowing a little bit in there, it doesn't quite thicken up the way a jelly or a jam does when you make it. It flows more like honey, and ironically because dandelions are one of the number one uh, flowers that bees use to pollinate and make honey. Dandelion jelly actually tastes like honey. So you make some of that at home and uh, find recipes online for making that too. I'll try and post them on our blog. But dandelion jelly and dandelion wine are pretty good stuff. Let's go see what else we got in the yard today. Okay and here we have uh, some white clover. Um, I know you saw red clover that sometimes looks purple on one of our other edible plants. Uh, white clover you usually see in your yard just like dandelions. They're kind of a little invasive weed there. Uh, the bunny rabbits really like them. At least ours do. We, they're out here every night eating them. But you know, white clover is pretty good to eat. They have the three little leaves as you can see. Now when you hear people talk about shamrocks, especially in Ireland, the white clover is actually the true shamrock that St. Patrick used to talk about the Trinity and convert people to Christianity. It was actually the white clover leaf, like this, that they uh, spoke about, that you hear about. So that's the true shamrock. Now when you see other little weeds that look like shamrocks, um, like we think of on St. Patrick's Day, that's probably wood sorrel that you're looking at in your yard, and we'll show you some of that in a minute. But your uh, clovers here are really high in protein and lots of vitamins for you. Um, good source of magnesium and calcium as well. Um, you can eat them. The leaves are good. You boil the heads down into a nice tea. So, this is another one to look for in your yard. Here's some of that wood sorrel I was talking about a few minutes ago. See how it looks like a real shamrock that we think of on like St. Patrick's Day? Well, wood sorrel is generally what people see when they see shamrocks. Because the real shamrock is actually clover. This is wood sorrel. Um, it's another one of those little weeds that you might find growing in your garden beds or out in your yard. Again, the bunny rabbits like this one too. They'll eat it up. Um, this one you don't have to cook. You can eat it straight as it is or put it in a salad. Um, it's kind of got a lemon flavor to it. Um, it's supposed to be good for arthritis and gout if you have those problems. You might want to eat some wood sorrel. Um, they like uh, shady areas in the woods. That's usually where you find it. Um, someplace shady and kind of woody. So that's... Uh, wood sorrel. Well here we have a burdock or sometimes called wild rhubarb. 
And don't mistake this for the regular red rhubarb that you gardeners put out there in your yard for uh, the stalks to make jams and jellies out of and pies. This is a wild rhubarb, basically. Um, and unlike real rhubarb, that you can't eat the leaves because they're poisonous, only the stalks. This one you can actually eat the leaves. They're not poisonous, they're actually very good for you. Um, burdock can be kind of an invasive species in your yard. Uh, it tends to uh, grow in a lot of different places where you may not want it. It has an extremely long tap root, which is why it's hard for gardeners to get rid of it. Because you can't just pull it up and expect it to go away. You kind of really dig down almost four feet sometimes to get that long tap root out because otherwise it just keeps coming back. It's very persistent. Um, let's see. Uh, the young leaves and flowers on it are really good um, to eat in salads or you can parboil them for a few minutes to kind of remove a little bit of the bitter taste. The, uh, if you take the, the root and kind of dry it out, make a tea out of it, it's supposed to help with uh, purifying your blood, help with uh, arthritis, kidney problems. It's also been historically used to help treat diabetes. Um, the Indians used to also take uh, root tea from burdock and mix it with a little brown sugar to treat measles. So uh, you can use this plant for all kinds of little things. Pretty nifty little plant. Like I said before, it is persistent and it'll grow throughout your yard like wildfire if you allow it to get out of control, but that's something to think about in your garden if you want to actually keep it and use it for uh, edible medicinal purposes. Okay, here we have uh, daylilies, the orange variety. Almost everybody has these growing in the yard at some point, especially if you like flowers and you want something that blooms year-round, you know, all through your summer and early fall, daylilies usually last good portion of the year. They're a really pretty flower. Um, you notice there's no black speckling in there. It's not a tiger lily or Asian lily. It's an actual day lily. Um, these are an excellent food source. The, the early shoots on them um, you can cut up and add to a salad or you can cook them like asparagus. Um, the young flower buds you can kind of cook like green beans or when older you can batter these flowers up too and fry them um, just like you would zucchini and squash blossoms or like the dandelion we spoke about earlier. Um, you can also add the flowers, to, um, whether they're fresh, withered, or dried, to seasoned stews and soups. Um, the white tubers at the bottom can be added to salads or prepared like corn. It has a kind of a corn texture to them. Um, let's see. You can use uh, this uh, root off of this uh, particular plant. They um, use this to uh, treat jaundice, nosebleeds, um, mastasis in women, um, also breast cancer and a few other illnesses. Um, you can use it as a poultice for piles and for those of you who don't know what piles are, that's hemorrhoids. So if you got a problem with that, you can, this root of this daylily is uh, pretty handy for treating all kinds of little ailments that you might have. So that's something else to consider having in your yard. Okay, I'm going to kind of show you my little mini herb garden this year that I've kind of let go wild a little bit so the soil can replenish. I still have some annuals and biennials in here growing and perennials. So I'm going to show you, uh, this is milkweed. And Mike did a video on milkweed earlier in one of our edible plants videos so you can learn more about milkweed. But just proving that it grows anywhere, I want to show you a garden bed and then other garden bed that I've let go fallow, milkweed everywhere. Milkweed, milkweed, milkweed. Tons and tons of it. It uh, it likes to spread and take over your yard if you're not careful. But I leave it for medicinal uses as well as for the monarch butterfly. That's their primary food source. So I like uh, seeing the pretty butterflies in my garden. But if you look down here, I've got, this is thyme that's growing. I have a, I started with one little tiny plant several years ago and, and you see some of it, it's grown really really big. It's taken over a good portion of my little herb garden here. Thyme's great for all kinds of recipes and soups and things like that. It has medicinal properties too that I'll list in a little while. Right now I'm just kind of showing you the garden. This is a 
This is my rosemary that is bolted and gone to seed. As you see, these flowers will be seeds later that drop off to replenish. But it's got a really pretty flower on it for being rosemary. But let's see if I can get this camera to focus on, on uh, some of the leaves in here. See, it's got the standard long leaves in here. Now, if you harvest your thyme or rosemary for cooking or drying purposes, you want to get it before it turns to flower and goes to seed, which is called bolting. And this is already bolted, so I won't pick any of this right now until later in the year after the flowers and everything have dropped off. Um, I, I cut some earlier this spring before it flowered and bloomed. And right next to it over here, I have sage. This is nice white sage that I got growing in here. It'll turn more white in the fall as it gets a little darker. Um, it kind of has a little, I don't know, leathery, velvety feel to the leaf. It smells really, really good. You saw my uh, bug off video where I was talking about using sage for your, keeping some mosquitoes out of your garden and out of your campsite and off of you. It's a great little handy plant to have. Really, really good if you like to mix rosemary, thyme, and sage together like I got and make a poultry seasoning. Especially if you like to eat a lot of chicken or wild game. Fowl, especially. Birds. So you can just cut, cut some of that off. Hang it upside down to dry and you know, have yourself a sage bundle. You probably noticed I got a sprig of mint here. I also have mint over here. And mint is really nice to have. Not only does it smell good, it does help keep bugs out of your garden and what have you. But you can, you know, grind this down, make a tea. You can uh, dry it up and grind it and use it in spices for, you know, cookies and candies and all kinds of things you cook. Um, you can extract the oil from it, which a lot of people do for using for baking, using peppermint or spearmint extracts. Um, the other reason I like having mint in my garden is if, let's say you got a toothache. You know, and you can't get to a dentist, or maybe you're like most people in America where you're in between paychecks and you're waiting on a chance to be able to afford to go see the dentist, because God knows they're not cheap. You can take some of this mint, whether it's mint or spearmint. Peppermint and spearmint are usually the best. You don't want to get like chocolate mint or some of the other uh, varieties out there, wintergreen. Believe it or not, those are actual mint, you know, varieties of plant. Um, what I have in my garden is peppermint and spearmint. But you can take several of these leaves chew them up a little bit, pack them on top of the gum that is next to the tooth that is hurting you, and let it sit, just like a wet poultice. And that actually really helps with the toothache. It will kind of numb it out and, and give you some relief for a little while from uh, having a bad toothache. So that's just a few of the uh, plants we have in the uh, yard and in the garden today. I'll show you more later in another video, but I hope you've enjoyed it. Find us on Facebook and share our videos on YouTube. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching. I'm Sarah from the School of Self-Reliance. Have a good one.